me today are Jack Ruler and Aditi Kapil with Mixed Blood Theater. Welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Now, Mixed Blood Theater, how did they come up with that name? And then give me a little history or, you know, about the theater. You know, Mixed Blood started in the mid-70s. It was really the idea then and still is, is that uh, a multiplicity of peoples coming together for common purpose and being better off for having come together. And so when I was 22 years old, there was a poster of a band that had people of all different races and cultures, <laughs> and it was an adjective. It said, watch for the mixed blood sound of whatever the name of the band was. Mm -hmm. And so that picture and that adjective met what I was trying to start in this theater. And so at that moment, it became the mixed blood theater. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Now, what are both of your titles? And um, can you just give me a little summary of what you do? Um, I am a resident artist at Mixed Blood Theater, and I've done a bit of everything. I started as an actor, I uh, have directed, and uh, most recently I'm a playwright. I have a play coming up this season at Mixed Blood. Okay. Yeah. I think she understates it. She is a little of all of those things, but a lot of all of those things. And I'm the artistic director. I've been there since the beginning, so I'm the one to blame for whatever goes well or not well. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, how does one become an actor within, within the theater? Audition. We have, yeah. so there's annual auditions for the area called the Unified Auditions in which about 400 people come mm -hmm. and we get to see what the broader talent pool is and then show by show, depending on the needs of any given play, we have auditions for that play. Okay, so do you take, you take adults, um, children, beginners, uh, advanced? You know, it's a professional theater. We're affiliated with all the major performing unions, so it is, it tends to be people who are not uh, using it as a stepping stone, but making it a destination. Okay, and then I understand you also take people from out of the city, a non-Minnesota resident. Absolutely, I mean, whatever the needs of the script are to sort of achieve the highest standards of excellence is what we'll do to make the play work. Okay, now what types of themes would a person um, see if they came to Mixed Blood? What types of plays do you show? Everything, I mean, th <laughs> this, is, this is the thing that I tell people about Mixed Blood is it's all about putting the breadth of human experience on stage. And it's about, uh, you're likely to see people of all cultures on that stage, people of all aesthetics, mm -hmm. art of all cultures and aesthetics on that stage. So it really feels to me like we do a bit of everything. Yeah, and one of our core values is really being predictably unpredictable. So the type of theater, if you think you know what you're gonna see, it better not be that the next time you come. But it is mm -hmm. really about addressing artificial barriers to people succeeding in America, and that might be through race or culture, or disability or language or any of a number of things, but it's all fair game for what we do. Okay, so now that was pretty interesting when I, I um, looked at what you guys did. You actually have people that are that have disabilities that are sure. actors in, in your plays. Mm -hmm. We've done okay, a number of plays wonderful. for several years uh, by, about, for, and with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. It's really a natural extension, again, is artificial barriers to people succeeding. We were actually remiss for our first 25 years in not including disability mm -hmm. among that, so uh, Aditi's been in, in a number of them as an actress, as a playwright, and as a director. I think it's um, s something that I always find worth s worth noting is that the quality of work we aspire to is we aspire to very high quality work. So, the and the work we've done with people with disabilities is I wrote well, the first play I ever wrote was called Love Person, and it was about um, among other things uh, a deaf woman who falls in love. So it's a love story. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was part of the storytelling, it's part of what made the love story great, and it allowed me to incorporate American Sign Language, which is a gorgeous language on stage. It's a very visual language, it's beautiful in theater. So it's, it's about making great art and, and having no artificial barriers to how we make great art. Okay, yeah. okay. So you say you write some of your play, of yes. some of the plays mm -hmm. also. Now, do you take um, submissions from yes. people who are aspiring to be writers? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they're not aspiring, they're really great, and we just yeah. haven't been able to know their plays yet. So Aditi often reads them first and then yeah. forwards her recommendations to me. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, and we have an open submission policy. So um, anyone who believes their play would be a good fit, we always recommend that they could take a good look at our history, look around the website, make That's sure that mission, we're yeah. a good fit, because otherwise it's a very quick process where I go, we don't do children's plays, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, if an, anyone who thinks that their play might be a great fit, uh, email it to literary, email uh, a, a short sample and a synopsis and their bio to literary at mixedblood.com. Okay, and then okay. from time to time you have, like for design, who does your design? That's or a good, you yeah, there's a great statement. The Twin Cities are just blessed with this huge pool of talent mm -hmm. of set, yeah. sound, lights, props, costume designers that uh, f we're fortunate enough to be able to work with. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about community outreach. Mm -hmm. What do you do in the community? 
um, how do you intermingle with the with the? You uh, know, just to give a few examples, we're we're in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood mm -hmm. in Minneapolis, which has become over the last decade primarily an immigrant and East African and Muslim community. And we'd actually gone from being an anchor in our own community to being uh, an island. And so we've really done a lot of work in offering our space, in offering free tickets, and having programming, uh, again, by about and for uh, African immigrants. So d connecting with the people that live near us, we do shows every year in Spanish and English with a bilingual cast. So uh, our outreach and inreach into the Latino communities, again, disability, it's all among part of what, part and parcel of who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. We also have a number of educational touring shows that right. go out into the community and they've been going out into the community right, for, for many years. decades. <laughs> yeah, so we have yeah. the five shows that'll do 300 performances a year all through it. We were in 68 of Minnesota's 83 counties last year. Yeah. Wow, okay, okay. Now you said you do different plays with, in different languages and mm -hmm. so do you have translators there or do you actually do yeah have them in the language. It's in the language and then the current show running for example has super titles so if you don't okay. understand Spanish there is translation for you to read so while okay. you watch the play and hear it in Spanish if you don't understand Spanish you can read it in English what oh. they're saying. Oh wonderful wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now can you talk a little bit about anything you have coming up on the horizons? Any plays that are coming up We soon have a or? brilliant <laughs> show called Agnes Under the Big Top <laughs> written by Aditi. Yes. And directed by Aditi. Yes it opens in February and um, it is a play that's very very close to my heart. I come from uh, an immigrant background. My father was from India, my mother was from Bulgaria, mm -hmm. and when they married, they moved to Sweden, so I'm actually originally Swedish nationality. And then I became an immigrant too. I came to the U.S. and settled in Minnesota. And this play is, uh, it's about immigrants. It's about the experience of, um, of identity and how it changes when you move into a new place. And it's, it's funny, and it's stories from my family, and it's, uh, I'm very excited about it. Oh, and what's it called? Agnes Under the Big Top, A Tall Tale. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> it's a <Wow>. mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one. How about any other ones? Is there something playing right now? You know, there's a, there's, after that actually is a really unusual thing is that Avenue Q, which has been a Broadway hit and been done all over the world, uh, and that is not our usual fare, but we're going to do it in our own particular way. It's really about people and puppets, again, coming together on this Sesame Street Light Avenue called Avenue Q. Mm -hmm and um, it address making, paying positive attention to their differences. Okay. So it's got puppets and monsters and people. I think okay. we just proved that everything we do is different. And right. <laughs> how we just describe what's happening. Well, um, can you give us your contact in, uh, information? So we're at mixedblood.com, our website, and our phone number is 612-338-6131 to get tickets for this year or any of the next 50. Okay, and where are you located? You're in Minneapolis, right? A block west of Cedar and Riverside near the University of Minnesota. Okay. And a beautiful old firehouse. <laughs> well, thank you both for coming to the show. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you thank so much you. for having me.